Hello everyone, my name is Jason Williams, part of the LifeQI team here today. We'll kind of be leading you through, through this getting started webinar. I'm joined by my colleague Kerry, who's going to be helping facilitate this session as well and kind of managing the questions and everything. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined one of these Zoom format webinars before, we can't see or hear you. Um, I'm afraid you're just going to be stuck with our faces today. Um, but if you do have anything you want to submit in terms of questions or chat, you, you feel free to do so, um, particularly if you've got any questions, if you could put them into the Q&A function, which you should find uh, along the webinar kind of controls. Um, and that makes it a bit easier for us to kind of process and try and answer those questions as we work through. And we will be picking them up as we go through. If you've got any kind of more general comments um, or kind of a question for us because you're struggling with kind of accessing or hearing us or whatever it might be, pop that into the chat and we'll kind of try and deal with that as well. But yeah, particularly any questions about the software, if you could hopefully put them into the Q&A, that will make it a bit easier for us to work through those. Um, as I said, we're getting started with LiveQI, so we're going to be taking you through kind of the basics of, of getting uh, joining LiveQI and going through the main process, which is mainly around setting up and populating a project. We're going to be walking through that and we'll try and point out a number of useful resources as we do that and we'll try and share links to those in the chat as well so you've kind of got links to take away with you we're also recording the session and so it normally is about 48 hours hours after this session you'll kind of be emailed out a link to the recording so if you want to watch it back in slower time or share that recording with any of your colleagues uh, you will be free to do so basically um, I think that's about it in terms of kind of the intros. I'm just going to start up the screen share and then we will get going. Okay, hopefully you can now see the screen that I'm sharing. Something in the way of my screen and move that out of the way. I'm going to start out very briefly just by showing you the bit of the website, a bit of basic kind of orientation around kind of life UI and the website and a few useful resources, and then we'll dive into the system itself. So I assume most of you have probably been to our website, but just in case you haven't, lifeqisystem.com. Um, we'll obviously tell you all about what this LifeQI software is. Um, you can explore the different feature pages. You can explore the different use case pages, the ways in which organizations tend to use LifeQI. There is also a resources, a number of different resources that's worth checking out. Um, you've got stuff on, say, customer stories, read about in a bit more detail how other organizations are using it. The blog, um, we're regularly publishing articles to, all to do with kind of improvement methodology, improvement science, all things uh, in that area. So that's always worth checking out. Webinars are where you would have got to and registered for, for this webinar. And we're regularly posting new webinars, so that's worth checking out. The Help Centre I'll come on to later, but that is all of the, the really detailed how-to guides and videos on how to do things in LifeQI. A couple of the useful ones, Improvement Hub and Improvement Resources, all of that good material that we write about on the blog kind of gets organized into the Improvement Hub um, and Improvement Resources. So lots of things you can download and kind of a series of articles that have been organized. So that's worth checking out. And then the Getting Started area we'll touch on in just a moment. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you from the website is if you are new and don't have an account yet, then you can sign up for an account and you can log into your account from the main website. So yeah, if you've already got an account and you come here, you've got the login button up in the top right hand corner, or if you're kind of new to LifeQI and your organization doesn't already use it, then you could always start a free trial and kind of get into it that way. Um, you've also got the links down here. So particularly if you're, again, if you've got a, an account already, click login, or if your organization's using it and just need to get yourself signed up, then click the sign up button. And then both of those will take you just through the login or through the sign up process and it's fairly, fairly straightforward, we won't show you that today. It'll just get you to you know, create an account, put in a password, all of those sorts of things. That should help get you in and get you, um, get you signed up to the platform. I mentioned the getting started kind of resources that we have, which again, you can get to resources getting started, which I've already got open here. There's a few different kind of getting started guides that we've got because there are different types of life QI user essentially. Um, we're gonna be working through today, the general user, sort of training guide essentially. Um, but we've also got sponsors, the kind of exec sponsor within the organization, the kind of roles and responsibilities they have in relation to LifeQI. That might be useful for you or for colleagues. You've got admin users who kind of look after the user management side of things within your organization and gurus who are your kind of essentially your super users. Um, so there's more information on all of those in this getting started area. 
but as I said, we're going to spend a bit of time today working through the kind of what we call the, the general user kind of profile um, and the key tasks associated with that. Typically, these people are involved in setting up and populating projects. So that's what we're going to spend our time on today, um, as well as some of the kind of team working and kind of keeping the project up to date, reporting those sorts of things. So you can always come back to this in slower time and work through it. Um, step by step pieces around setting up your profile and once you're in there, adding your profile image, searching for projects, things like that. We'll touch on a little bit of that. Um, and then we're going to go through, so most of the time, kind of creating and populating the project, basically, which are kind of all mentioned in these sections. And all these blue highlighter bits are links through to the help articles. So they will walk you through each of these elements in more detail, or at least as much detail as I'm going to go through today, basically. So there's plenty of information on there to kind of work through in, in slower times as well. Um, OK. Let's dive into the software itself, start having a look through. So once you're signed up and you log in, you'll come into your start page. This will be specific to you. Um, so you won't have a, a profile picture to begin with, but you can then come in and upload that. If you go to your profile area in the top right hand corner, the kind of profile it will get into there and you can then kind of go in and, uh, and upload your photo, things like that. If you are working in a want to work in a different language, then you can go into preferences and you can change your language settings as well. Um, and yeah, I've got mine set to US English today, so I've got my organisations with a Z and things like that. So we've even got English English and uh, and US English in there as well. In terms of some basic kind of orientation navigation, as I kind of spotted already down the left hand side, we've got this main menu. This is always there, and these are all the different areas that make up LifeQI. Not going to go through all of those in detail today. We're going to mainly focus on the project space, um, but we do run other webinars that dive into more detail around analytics and reports and programs and things like that. But yeah, that's always there and allows you to get around the different areas of LifeQI. Your start page is really all about you and what you're connected to on LifeQI, what you're involved in. So the main thing here is you're going to see a projects list. So these are projects that I'm a direct team member on. First time you log in, that's probably going to be blank unless you've already been invited to a project. But over time, that list will build up. And most of the time, you're coming back into LifeQI to update a project. So you see it there, you click on it, and you're straight into it and kind of get updating, basically. But you can also do things like manage any invitations. So I can see that Erica has invited me to her project, accept or decline. Um, I've pinned Erica's profile, so I can kind of see what she's up to. I can check out my organization's profile, groups, programs that I link to. So anything you're directly connected to, you tend to get to from your start page. Uh, alternatively, you can go into these areas and you can kind of browse and search and things like that. So if I click into the projects list, that's going to show me a more detailed list of my projects. And I can see that they're my projects because over on the right here, the filter is showing me that they're active and they're my projects. So I can see that list, click on any of them, get into them. Um, or I can search that list. The other option or one of the key ways in which you might want to change this list is look across everything in your organization. Um, so if we click on my orgs projects and get rid of my projects, it'll update that list and let's change briefly there. And I can now see everything that's taking place across my organization. Um, so if I'm interested to see, you know, are we already running any pressure source projects? I can now search for pressure source and it will filter that list again down to just kind of what I'm interested in basically. So it's not just about kind of you and your project, it's also trying to provide you a repository of other work that's taking place or has taken place across your organization, and trying to give you a view of that so you can kind of learn from that basically. So it's worth being aware of that. Um, and while we're here, let's dive into starting a new project because um, this is going to be where you do that. So again, just to reorientate you, you're in the projects uh, area, you've got your list of projects, if you want to start a new one, you've got a start a new project button up here. This is going to guide us through a little wizard that's going to help us sort of set up that project. Give it a second, I'm going to skip over that because you won't have access to that piece. So yeah, forget your your step one will look different. It will look like this. So you there's a couple of mandatory fields in this process, but very few, and, and pretty much giving it a title is one of the only ones. So um, got to give it a title. Jason's project. Um, uh, and then the rest I can pretty much skip through and come back to later and update 
um, and things like the problem statement because it's not highlighted red it's not a mandatory field so i can just totally skip over that for now come back to that later if i want um but you know if i've got this information i can i can obviously put that in here there are uh, these little eyes these little information icons that are kind of littered throughout the system they give you a bit more information on hints and tips on what to put in these different fields so for aim statement for example if i'm not quite sure what an aim statement is i can click on that and it gives me some hints and tips on you know how to write an aim statement things to think about a good example a bad example that kind of thing so that's kind of useful particularly for those that are fairly new to quality improvement and might not understand some of the term terminology so give it a quick statement um, skip over some of this so you don't need all of the information up front if you've just got an idea for a project the, the kind of the basis for it you can come in here and charter it fairly quickly and then update the rest of it later so it doesn't by by no means has to be fully formed before you start this process move on to this step who's on the project team this is the first time where i can start adding other people to the project i don't have to do all of that now some people like to kind of set it up maybe populate it a little bit more and then bring the team in but I'll show you how you can do that from, from this point as well. So it's already put me on it and it's already linked to my organization. That's kind of there by default. Um, but if I want to invite new team members, just click on the, the invite button up here. It's going to show me a list of the people that I have regularly kind of worked with. Um, so I'm not limited to those. You know, you can search for people, so let's search for my colleague Kerry, who's on the line today. Yep, spot her in the list click on her to add her I can then control the role that she has on this project and her permissions which can be quite important so there are a range of different roles that you can give people and the list that you see will depend on the access that you've got but let's say I'm going to make Kerry the sponsor that doesn't change any permission she has it's just kind of giving her a role it's just giving her a different label as it were on the project what does control what she can do her permissions are these view edit and admin options um, I'm going to allow her to have view and edit um, so she can add and update any of the information on the project. But if I don't give her admin, then she won't be able to control who has access to the project. So let's just say I don't trust her that much. So I'm not going to give her admin. Click that. And she's now going to appear in the list as ready to invite. So when I finish this process of kind of setting up the project, LifeQI will fire off an email to her saying, you know, Jason's invited you to join his project please check it out, please come and accept or decline that basically. But it won't do that until we've kind of finished this process. So that would be how you would invite people who already have a LifeQI account. If however you want to invite someone who doesn't have an account yet, just kind of scroll to the bottom of this little pop-up. Can't find someone if you click on that. Then as long as you've got their email address, you can punch that email address in there and then click send invite and it will do the same sort of process, but it will just fire out an email to them saying, You've been invited to this project, but first you need to sign up to LiveQI. Please click here to sign up. Once they've been through that process, they'll then be able to uh, accept the invitation to your project. So this can be a really good way of getting new people into the system um, rather than just getting them to sign up for the sake of it, invite them into a project that they're going to be working on. So that's a good way of coming in. Um, so I'm going to leave my team as that for the moment. Um, I guess it can be worth highlighting actually very briefly that it's not just about people if you've got kind of groups of or which might represent a department within your organization you can go through the same process to add a group to your project as well privacy obviously an important one the default setting here is only members can view so that means only the people and the people at the organization that I've added will be able to see the contents of this project no one else outside of that kind of core list of people and organization will be able to access this project if however you change it to everyone can view that means that everyone on LifeQI in your country will be able to view the contents of your project not edit it but they would be able to view the contents of your project so for most organizations they don't change that setting they leave it as the default um, you know only members can view until such time that they're happy to share it with the their improvement community outside of their organization. So it's just kind of worth being aware of that. 
Uh, and then one of the final steps, categorizing the project. So here you've got a couple of options, um, linking it to priorities, linking it to tags. Um, these can be helpful for other people finding your project. They're also really helpful for the way that your organization might report on your project. So typically, particularly priorities, there might be a range of improvement focused priorities that the organization's kind of working towards. If they've defined those in live QI, then when you click on that button, you'll get a list of them available. So these are the ones that we have at our made up hospital that we're working from. So I'd say this one's going to be all about improving staff well-being. So I've clicked on that and it's kind of selected that one. It's now going to appear on my project. Plus any reports that now run that uh, use our priorities, this project is now going to kind of a feature in that. So that's quite important. Tags work. Tags are a bit like hashtags in that, you know, people can then search for joy at work and they'll be able to find all the projects that have got that tag on it. And there might also be reports that are that are triggered based on uh, certain tags being on projects. So you can just kind of click on that and it'll add that tag to it, basically. So yeah, got a tag, got a priority click next, move on. And then final step, nice and straightforward, start and end date for the project. And if you want to put in a location for the project, you can do so. Um, so yeah, there's a few steps to get that first set up. Um, the project doesn't exist on the system until I completed this process and click create project. So if I bail out of that now, project's not going to exist and I'm going to have to come back and repeat that process. Um, but as I said, there's only really the title that you need to add and you can just skip through the rest and come back to it later. I've added a bit. So let's go create project. It's now going to save that for the first time. Um, and then we'll better work on the rest of the project. Just give that a second to save. Taking a moment. OK, so now into my project, Jason's project. Um, and it's opened up essentially the other pages that we're going to work through in a second. Um, this panel that's appeared at the top gives me a bit of a preview as to what I've got in the project. So my, my project team have appeared there. I obviously don't have any of these elements yet. So the little guide that's popped up is kind of encouraging me to do the next obvious thing, which would be going and build out my driver diagram. We'll do that in a minute. It's going to kind of explain a little bit more what we've got on this page first. So I'll just close that. Um, firstly, point out this score. So it's popped up 0.5 click on change this score. So this is a, your project progress score and it appears on all of the projects in life QI and it's kind of a high level marker as to the level of progress you're making through the life cycle of the project. Um, it's a scale that was designed by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement or IHI um, and we've kind of uh, adopted it here so that an organization or a team can see you know wherever we got to in this process without having to delve through every chart and every PDSA cycle to see where you got to. You can just come in here and click on the relevant score um, to you know, record where you've got to in that life cycle. And there are obviously titles, but also definitions for each of these stages. So you make that judgment call as to you know, where you've got to in that process. Um, once you've selected the relevant score, just click change score and it's going to update that for you. This is a really important marker for the kind of the reporting side of the projects, particularly when an organization is looking across dozens or hundreds of these is going to want to know you know, where are we at with these scores, basically. So keeping that up to date is really important and certainly encourage you and team members to do that regularly. The stuff we've got at the bottom of this page is what we set up when we first charted the project, basically. So it's all there for me. If I want to come in and make any changes, I can. I just have to click the edit button. These will then become changeable and I'll better change them. Um, click save and it will kind of update them. But yeah, won't make any more changes there. Let's dive into the rest of the project and start working our way through those basically. So yeah, these tabs that have appeared here almost reflect those and these are the different pages that make up the project. So driver diagram, this is the first of the improvement tools that we've built into LifeQI. Um, and you know, we'll see the tool here as we open it up, we can come in and build the driver diagram. The idea is it's just quicker and easier to do it in here than it is to do it in something like PowerPoint. So I need to edit the diagram to get started. So I've got my edit button which uh, we're always kind of over here on the right hand side, click that and it's now going to become changeable. Sorry, I already defined the aim when I did that charter and I got my plus button so I can start kind of adding things to this. And as you can see, it draws the box, it draws the line. So start putting in some information into here. So if I want to add another primary driver, I go back over here, click that plus button, pop another one down here, you know, driver two, 
let's say you want to start adding some secondary drivers. Not very imaginative, but you can see the process. I'm kind of going through here. I'm just going to build it out. So it's just kind of adding them on, change idea, um, repeat the process again. Idea one, idea two, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to add, uh, maybe I want to link idea two to both of these drivers, I can do that. Um, if I click the pin icon, it's then giving me options. I can now pin from that. I can pin to here. So if I click that pin, it's now drawn that line. I could also break the link between these. If I click pin, I could then click the cross button there, for example, and kind of get rid of that um, should I wish to do so. So maybe we're going to do that, kind of now essentially move the alignment of that. Um, yeah, that's fairly straightforward. So you can see, you just keep clicking plus and it will draw an extra box and it will draw the lines for you. One of the other things you can do is you've got these choose a color options rather than all just being black and white. If you want to provide a bit of color, either just to make it look more interesting or to give it an extra dimension, help people understand what's going on. As you can, if you click manage colors, you get this color palette and I can then, um, you know, pick a few colors and I can I can label them. So come up with something kind of helpful rather than just the names of the colors, but it could be a rag rating, it could be types of work. Um, you define what those which colors you want to use and what they're going to mean. Click done, and those colors are now labeled down there on the on the legend. But I can now pick them as well, so I can start to. Right, if all of these are going to be blue, these are all my I don't know clinical interventions. Maybe these can all be kind of process interventions or something like that, rather than just being labeled orange. You do that provides that extra kind of dimension for people. Um, click save. And that driver diagram is then going to be created it's there. The rest of the team can see it. Indeed, the rest of the organization can see it. So it's just can show you how quick and easy it is to create one of those and then just come back in and click edit and you can start updating that as well. Over time, you might create a whole load of iterations of this. And if you want to go back and have a look at them, just click the history and it will show you all the historical versions when they were changed and who changed them, that sort of thing. So yeah, driver diagram is nice and easy. Let's work through to measures and charts. Um, it's obviously going to be where we're going to record our different, you know, our data over time, basically using our run charts and control charts. So we'll walk through creating a new measure and adding some data to that. Again, another one of these little wizards pops up every time you're creating you know, a project, a measure, a PDSA, a new thing. You're going to get one of these little wizards pop up and it will kind of guide you through that basic setup process. So. Hopefully you're measuring something more interesting than that has a better title than this, but we're just going to call this one new measure. Um, we've got a couple of mandatory fields here. So measure type highlighted red. So I've got to pick one of these process balance or outcome. Again, you've got the little information icon that will describe what those things are if you're not sure. And again, this isn't mandatory, so I can skip over this and come back to that later if I wish to do so. Data collection plan. Hopefully, you know, um, you know how you're going to be collecting that data. Who is going to be responsible for that? So you can describe all of that in there. Then move on to choosing your chart type. If I just click into this, it's going to give me the list. These are the different chart types I can pick. As you see, we've got run chart and seven types of control chart to pick from. Some of you probably know what all of those chart types are for and know how to pick them. Uh, many people don't, and that's fine. Um, fairly common. So need help choosing a chart? There's a little link down here click on that and it'll pop up this extra guide that allows you to kind of flick through the different chart types that we've got and for each of them it will give you a description um, a typical examples of when you might use that chart type and if you are going to use it the kind of data that you'd need to capture so when it's you know you want to make this choice you want to make a relevant choice up front based on what I'm recording I know it looks like it's going to be a percentage chart so cool I'm going to pick a p chart so it's made that selection for me now and it's quite important to kind of work through that, spend a bit of time choosing that. We've then got uh, data collection frequency. Again, a range of options here. If I know I'm going to be recording data on a regular basis, I can pick from one of these options. Or if I'm unsure or it's not date based, I can pick that option there. Uh, my scenario, I'm going to go with monthly for now. Um, and then the last step here is I can link this back to one of my drivers. So if I particularly want to associate this with some part of my driver diagram, I can click on that and I kind of essentially kind of pick through my driver diagram and make that linkage. So let's say I want to link this to driver number one, selected that, click plus, and it's going to then make that linkage. And then if I go back to my driver diagram on the other page, 
it will look at driver one and it will say there's one linked measure and I can click on it. It will show me the measure that's linked to that. So it's giving you a bit of kind of traceability between um, the different parts of the project, basically. So that's three steps in defining that measure. And I need to click create measure before it to be saved. Let's do that. And that's now defined the measure. Um, the planning information, kind of the setup of that that I've just I've just been through is now saved in this area. So I can come in and I can change some of that, but I can't change all of that now. Things like the chart type is fixed. Now I can't just change that. I'd have to recreate them in measure if I wanted a different chart type. If we go into the chart section, still within this particular measure, this is where I can then start to add those charts basically. Um, and you've got options to add multiple charts. This main scenario there be if I want to record data in multiple locations, but I'm measuring the same thing that I could have a chart per location. Um, but you don't have to add multiple charts, it could just be the one. So I'm gonna click add a chart. Um, and then this pops up. So I can give it a chart name again, because you might be doing different locations. Let's call this, this is gonna be data coming from Abbey Ward. And then I've got the beginnings of my data sheet. So these are kind of my essentially my column headings and I can add my first row. I could just add, you know, one row's worth of data here uh, if I've got it. Um, and I can just you know, click in here and, and type that in, or I could add row again and type in a few rows of data if I've got it. But you don't have to manually type it in. If you've got a whole load of data in a spreadsheet, you can copy and paste that data in in bulk, which is particularly helpful if you've already got that, that baseline data set, which I do have some open, so I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. Um, so I've got this in a Google Sheet, but it works exactly the same in Excel. So I've got monthly data with my counts and totals. The important thing is I've got the same number of columns as my life QI chart is expecting, and they're in the same order. Assuming that you've got that, um, select the data that you want. It's going to grab all of that, and then you, know, you can just control copy or right select and click copy in there. Go back into here. I'm just going to click into this first cell here, this kind of time period on this date cell, right click, click paste, and it will paste the columns and it will paste all of the rows in for me. So I haven't had to spend any time really manually putting that in. It's copied all of that in for me and then just click create chart. So that's created that. Again, if I've got some data from my other locations, I can start adding that in. But I can see this one's been created now. And if I click on that, I can go in and start to have a look at that. So let's have a look at this chart. So this is the P chart. Um, come back to that in a second. If you go beneath the chart, you'll see all of the data that I've just put in. So you can see that there. And I'm going to be able to make changes to that. But I can also now see the chart as well. If I want to make any changes to the chart or the data, I need to click the edit button. Um, but let's just have a look at the chart to begin with. So it's taken my count and total data, it's calculated my percentage line for me. Based on that, it's calculated my center line and all of the control limits because it's a P chart, it's calculated all of those control limits for me. Um, and it's then also then looking for any special cause variation in the data and it's spotted some high variation here and high variation over here as highlighted by these kind of pink boxes. If I click on that, it will give me the definition of that. So this is how we interpret high, high variation, just so you're clear. Um, so yeah, doing all of that calculation does all of that plotting for you. Nice and straightforward, takes no time at all. Um, if I want to make any changes to that chart now or that data, as I said, click edit. So you can't accidentally change the chart. You do need to click edit. Um, and then I can come down and change any of this data. I can delete data points. I could scroll to the bottom and click add another row. And again, I could just uh, copy and paste more data in or I could type in, it's up to you. If I then uh, click on a data point, I've got some options that appear here. So you can see a bit more information in terms of the values associated with that data point, but then the options I've got for editing it is I can add a note. I can add that. I can then link in PDSA circles. I don't have any on this project yet, but if I did, they would have then appear in this list and I could select the PDSA cycle that I want to associate here. And then the next option or final option here is next phase. So the chart will work through three different phases. It's up to you to decide when you want to move to the next phase. So as, as shown at the top here, quite small, but you can see we're in the baseline phase, automatically starts there. 
when I get to a data point, I'll say, all right, at this point, I want to move into the next phase or the test phase. I click that and it will update the chart to show everything before that was in baseline and it will fix all of those points. And then it will show the next period will be test and I'll be in that until I repeat that process and move to the sustain phase. I'm not really going to dive into that today because we don't have a huge amount of time, but we do do another webinar that's more of a deep dive on, on charting and we explore all of that, but there are also help articles on that if you just want to kind of look up that bit. So, yep, there's my note, I've added that, click save, and that will then be recorded for everyone else. So that's a quick look at the chart, worth pointing out the actions button up here. If I want to get my chart out, export my chart as an image, to use it, use it in our uh, you know, presentation, I go actions, export image, or I want to export the data out to Excel, and I can export that data sheet. You've got that option there. Okay, so that's a quick look at the chart. Let's come back up to my measures list of where I see the rest of my project. We'll keep working through a few more bits to go through. I guess just going to pause for a second before I move on. Kerry, have I missed anything? Have I got any questions that I need to cover off? I haven't just sort of done so in the flow of things. Uh, no questions at the moment. Um, I have just posted a few helpful articles in the chat, but if there are any questions, do feel free to either pop them in the chat or in the Q&A area and we can answer those as we go, no problem at all. Excellent, thank you. All right, well, let's keep going. We've got, got a, a bit left to cover. So yeah, we've covered off the first few pages of the project. Let's move on to the obvious next one, the PDSA section. So PDSA ramps, yep, I've got none because I haven't started the no, this part of the project yet, but I go over here to the gray button, you know, click plus, click create a new thing. Again, one of these little wizards. So what's the purpose of the PDSA? Give your PDSA a title. Um, again, don't have to fill this out now, but I can do change ideas. This is one of those lookup fields. So it's gonna look back at all the different change ideas I've got. So I can make that linkage work through this. Yeah, I'm responsible for this. And actually now we're going to make Kerry responsible for this PDSA cycle. Uh, it's happening. Yep, it's happening next month. Um, it's happening in the office. Um, give some notes, a bit of an overview so Kerry knows what to do. Maybe I need to create some tasks for her so you can define tasks. I won't go through that now. It's nice and straightforward, you know, name of the task, due date, that sort of thing, who's responsible for it. Build up a little task list if you want it. Your prediction, uh, key part of that kind of planning process, what do you think is going to happen? Um, write that out there, link in any measures that you think are going to be relevant to this PDSA cycle. Let's say this one is particularly relevant. I make that linkage here and then cr create PDSA cycle. So again, nice and quick. Obviously, I didn't fill all of that out, but it's just showing you the little wizard that takes you through the planning stage of the PDSA cycle. That's now captured that cycle. It's taking me into it. So I can see I'm into here, I'm into the PDSA form. The tasks that I would have created would be in that tab, although I didn't create any. So I'm on the main PDSA section. I've got the plan or whatever I filled out. Um, scroll down, I can see the measure that I've linked to. And now the area that's kind of popped up for me is this do study act area. Can't, again, I can't accidentally sort of make any changes in there, but if I go over and click edit, these fields will all become changeable and I can, you know, begin to, Come, come in and reflect on what happened, plan what I'm going to do next, etc. And then once I've done that, I've got this new cycle button. And if I click that, it will create the next PDSA cycle for me as part of this kind of ramp of cycles. Um, and I can begin kind of planning out or updating what I'm going to do next, basically. So yeah, it's nice and straightforward. The idea is, you know, you've, your PDSAs are all in the same place. You never have to go looking for a template because it's just in the PDSA section of your project. If you go and look at a colleague's project, you're about to find all of their PDSAs. Everyone's following the same format. Um, it encourages a certain amount of kind of discipline and kind of rigor with, with how you plan these out, how you execute them, how you document them, basically. So yeah, over time, you'll see this list build out. And you'll then begin to notice the kind of color coding on these icons. So only the P's gone dark blue because that's the only bit I've filled out. As I fill out the other parts of that PDSA, they'll all go dark blue. So once I've got a whole range of these, I can kind of see where I'm at in terms of you know which have, which have been worked on and which haven't been worked on, basically. Okay, that's it in terms of the core kind of tool set, if you like, within uh, a LifeQI project. But we're not done yet in terms of functionality. The idea is there are other bits that support this this kind of process of running a project, it's not just about the tools and the data. I'm trying to provide as much as possible 
the kind of the one-stop shop for for how to work on where to work on your project so as well as those data elements you've also got a discussions area i want to come in and get the team together and kind of discuss and debate certain aspects of the project or pull in my improvement advisor or coach i can do that in the discussions area and it means that i don't have to have that on email and a load of data in excel somewhere and you know my driver diagram in a powerpoint in a file server somewhere kind of bring all of that together and i can house all of that information in kind of one of these pages so yeah you can create variety of different discussion threads that are relevant to your particular project and they would then all be housed in here a um, few things over on the right hand side worth drawing your attention to so we first set up the team when we did that kind of project charter initially if i click on their faces there it slid them out and i can see still waiting for kerry to accept her invite uh, email will be in her inbox but myself and the organization are on it if I now want to add more people to the project because I'm happy it's kind of pretty well set up, I can click invite new members and just go through the same process we saw when we first chartered it. So nice and easy to do that. The sort of bullet point list here is the timeline. So most of this is automatically created. So it's just kind of recorded the things that I've done on the project, the things that I've created. So a PDSA has been added, the name of that measure, the name of that. I changed the progress score, Kerry got invited. So this is really helpful at being able to see what's going on in the project or what's not been going on. Is the timeline really old in terms of activity? As I said, most of that is automatically generated, but you can add to the timeline. And there's a few different types of events you can post. The one I would encourage the most would be the status update. So this is your kind of your free text status update um, that will post that timeline and will also be included in a lot of the reports your organization might run. But as much as anything, it's about keeping, you know, you and your colleagues, your team up to date with kind of what's going on with the projects. So you can kind of work through the process to post those. If you really want, then you can flip that timeline and see it on a calendar view. It's almost like a Gantt chart that will display across the page. There isn't really enough to do that yet today, um, but over time you'll begin to see that calendar build up. The little filing cabinet is very much, as you'd imagine, upload files. You can organize them into folders. So any uh, and plus any reports that you run from the project will automatically be stored in here as well. Um, but but also the useful thing is, you know, if there are other things that you want to associate files you need to upload, other reports, or maybe there's a process map or something like that that you've done in a in another package. If you want to update, upload that, kind of associate that with the project, you can upload that and it will all appear in here. And then the megaphone is essentially kind of a shortcut into the discussions area, basically. So you can come in here and post messages and that will alert the team um, as you post messages. So those are the main bits, the main pages and the kind of the little sort of action center over here on the right hand side associated with the project. One or two other things to, to show you just briefly before we kind of wrap up. Uh, I mentioned earlier sort of exporting the chart uh, to get that out, but it's not the only way of kind of reporting on your project. When you're at this kind of top level of the project, you can see the pages. If you click the actions button up here, uh, you'll get the option to export the driver diagram, should you wish to do that, but you'll also get a reports option. Um, and here, if you click that, you'll then see a list of different essentially report templates that you can use or you can run against your project. The list that you see will be dependent on your organization and their templates. Um, but basically, these are just streamlined ways of running off project information into, into a PDF report. So you'll have different, yeah, different templates that will extract different levels of detail from these. You select the relevant one and click run report and it will, will generate that information for you. I've got one open so you can see kind of what it looks like. Oh, oh, zoomed in a little bit there. Um, so yeah, here's one of the PDFs on my reducing pressure source information is extracted. Some of the charter information is extracted. The driver diagram is extracted, you know, some of the charts. So just to give you a, a very quick preview of kind of what that looks like, how that would extract that information into a PDF. So the idea is you don't have to manually go build and write these reports. You should be able to extract the information um, using that reporting functionality. So yeah, those are the main bits within a project. Um, as I said, we've got detailed help articles on how to do everything uh, that we've been through today. Um, and one of the ways of getting to that is at the top right hand corner of kind of all of the pages, you'll find a get help link. So because we're on one of the main project pages, it says get help with projects. But if I jump back into measures, it's get help with measures. Um, if I click on that, it will open up 
the relevant part of the help center. So help.lifeqisystem.com is our help center. And you can see the all different sections that cover every part of the, of the LifeQI platform. Um, we've landed in the measures and charts piece and here are all the different articles that, that kind of go through that. So for example, clicking into creating a measure, it's now gonna give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. And there's even a, a shorter kind of tutorial video in here that's kind of two or three minutes long that will guide you through how to create just the measure bit, kind of repeating what I did earlier. And as I said, as well as the step-by-step -step guide. So there's tons of stuff in there. If you don't remember kind of what we've been through today, um, you get to that there. You'll also notice when you're logged in that you'll find the little um, kind of live chat button in the bottom right-hand corner that I don't have in the demo system. I think you'll find it, yeah, it looks like this. If you click on that, you'll be able to search these help articles. You'll be able to get hold of our team via live chat. Um, so you can always ask them for any technical assistance for how to use the system. Or you can get them on email. You can always get us on help at lifeqisystem.com. So it's kind of worth bearing that in mind as well. Yeah, that's that's kind of almost it for today. That was the sort of the run through of how to set up and how to at least initially populate all the different aspects of a project. Um, obviously it takes a lot longer than that to really fill it out in detail. Um, and when we haven't touched on some of the other areas of the system, um, but I would encourage you to go in and explore some of those, particularly that project list and filtering that. You might want to look into the organizations area and your organization's profile will pop up um, when you go into there. So if you click onto that, it will show you in a bit more detail. So you can see things like, does my organization have a priority set up? Who are the list of people that have got access to my organization? If I click on their faces, that will slide out. I can see the list of projects that we've got linked to my organization. I can see the different groups that we've got. Um, so maybe oh, I'm interested in seeing what's going on within our children's division. If I click into that, it'll open up the children's division group. I'm our my organization. I can see just the projects taking place there. I might have access to the discussions and things like that. So there's quite a lot you can just kind of come in and explore, even though it's not just about you setting up uh, a new project, basically. I hope that's been helpful. I'm going to pause for a second. Kerry, anything again that I've missed or questions that have come um, in? No, I don't think so. I haven't seen the quiet today on questions. So obviously, um, I think you must have covered everything off as we've gone through. Uh, obviously, if there are any questions after this, um, do feel free to come through on the live chat or um, send either one of us an email. We're more than happy to help out. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, just checking back on the Getting Started Guide here. We've certainly been through the whistle stop tour of how to do all of these things, um, staying on track, updating the progress score. As I mentioned, really important to keep that score up to date, filters into all the reporting, adding data to charts. We've had a look at that, uh, running PDSA cycles, um, yeah inviting others as thing this is this isn't for a single people running projects on their own this is very much about getting a team of people around a project so yeah as you set your project up very much encourage you to invite the team in and help you kind of assign different roles to that and work together to to, to make those projects a success and also spend some time being nosy and looking around the organization's profile and seeing what else people are up to there's there's normally a lot more going on in there than than you might first imagine so please check that out Okay, I think we're just about at time. Um, and I think that was everything to cover today. So thank you for that. If there are any, anyone wants to stay on and ask any more questions, then please do so. But otherwise we'll wrap it up in a, in a couple of moments. Thank you everyone, hope that was helpful.